We had shirtless Tyler C. Yeah. <laughs> we had Jesus still loves me. Jesus still loves me. And we had the windmill. Well, Greece is known for the windmills, right? This is your Bachelorette recap. Grab your glasses. It's time for roses and rosé. I'm sorry for that. Everybody, I'm Lauren Zima. And the fantasy suites have come to us. And they were even better than expected, weren't they? It's like when you get something and it's really good and it totally lives up to all of your hopes and dreams and then you get it a second time. Okay, what did you think of Fantasy Suites? Let me know in the comments below. In honor of this unforgettable episode of The Bachelorette, I am drinking Chardonnay, not Rosé today, but here's why. I am drinking a $70 bottle of wine. I won't be eating this week, but I don't care. This was such an amazing episode that I had to do it justice. I love cake bread wine. This is not an ad, I just love it. It's expensive, but it's a really good Chardonnay. Let's all indulge a little bit. We deserve it. Hannah deserved it too. And she fucking got it. Okay! So we are in Greece, and we're starting off with a lot of looking around shots. Hannah's looking around, and Peter's looking around. Oh, Peter's first, okay. Hello. Hey. And Hannah straight up says that if everything is on the up and up with Peter, uh, she's ready to get down. Gonna get down. I want to drink for every time we have clarity this episode because Hannah got a lot of clarity, didn't she? Mm -hmm. See that boat over there? Yeah. We're gonna right? sail on it today. Oh my god. <laughs> and Peter gives us the sailboat. Hey guys, it's me. I had to vlog about Peter. Here's the thing, I'm sure you've seen E.T.'s interview with Peter's ex-girlfriend and she makes some claims about him. But we've got like two episodes left and I just want to freaking enjoy this show. So I'm just talking about the episodes as they are and I also do still have questions for Peter. Just like I have questions for Jen and have issues and questions and lots of thoughts for Luke. So all will come in due time. Until then, here we go. We'd seen this coming in the trailers, but God, it was glorious, wasn't it? Oh the cliffs God, yeah. and the blue waters and the sunshine. This is amazing. And a lot of good S words with Peter and this episode. So I want to drink for every good S word, but please drink responsibly. There's one big S word, isn't there? Sex. Sex is the S word. I'm going to say sex. It's what you can say. Sex. Okay. I've stripped down every wall that I ever had. Peter also has an S for stubble on the sailboat. He's got a five o'clock shadow going on and I like it. What did you think of Peter's newfound facial hair? I was so worried that Peter was always kind of looking like a 14 year old boy. Could he even grow facial hair? Turns out, yes, S for stubble, drink. If I could get a picture with you in this like background, wow, that'd be like my screensaver on my phone forever. <laughs> We get an unexpected S word screensaver. I didn't see Peter bringing that up, but screensavers are uh, sexy too. There's so many moments where I kind of just want to like get up and scream. And S for scream. Peter wants to scream. <laughs> we know he loves to howl. Yeah, and maybe he did some howling one or two times. Mm. Okay, at dinner, I'm thinking, Peter, just say, you love her. We heard you say that you were in love with her on Hometowns to your mom, but not to Hannah. Well, cheers to love. And drink every time Peter is so close to saying, I love you. And I, um, this is, um, So when we were flying. <laughs> yeah. uh, also, S for sunburned. Peter got quite sunburned. Did anyone else notice that? His cute little red stubbled face, you know? Needed some sunscreen. SPF, I'm sorry for this. I better stop. I'm just trying to say S words now. It made me realize how in love with you I am. And then he says, 
is it? Peter loves Hannah. I was shocked he didn't howl, but we'll do it for him. Woo! <laughs> So that seals the deal for Hannah. She is like, I need that time with Peter. Totally I just do. need that. I'm all in if you're in. I need that time. And oh my God, they are walking to the windmill. Peter is the windmill. Peter is the windmill. Peter is the windmill in the fantasy suite. I am a windmill. Were you guys happy Peter was the windmill? Oh my God, I'm in my mic cord. I gotta sit down. This is. Well, Greece is known for the windmills, right? Peter says Greece is known for windmills and it is now. Oh, forget the Greek gods, forget Greek food. Windmills. Siri, how do you say windmill in Greek? I can't translate into Greek yet. Wow. The Bachelorette is ahead of its time. Drink every time they say windmill. It's legit a windmill. We're literally staying. We're in a windmill. <gasps> oh my god. Peter. Okay. And then, oh my god, one of my favorite things, they are breaking the fourth wall again. Peter. Okay, that was not me this time. We're gonna close <laughs> Did that. You said this, in <laughs> this, here? this time proving something I've heard from leads before, that there are condoms available for you in the fantasy suite, as there should be. And this camera work, oh my God, they are zooming in on the condom, and I was dying. And we have the morning after, and you know, we usually have some questions about what goes down in fantasy suites, but not this time. That was such an amazing night. Mm -hmm. This time we know exactly what happened and how many times it happened. And seemingly that it happened safely. That's wonderful. No S for shaming here, just an S for sex. And an S for standing. We stand, Hannah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, I've already gone through almost a glass of wine on the Peter date. But again, deserved. I wonder how much that glass cost me. Like 20 bucks? Whatever, we're indulging. Last night was the best night of my life. So it's the morning after, and some of the wording here, Peter says they, quote, came together. We came together. Like, so much last night. Great. And Peter is in sexy drawstring sweatpants. I love when guys wear that look. And Peter likes Hannah so much, doesn't he? In fact, he loves her. I am in love with Hannah. We've heard him talk about how he's never felt this way for anyone before, and I am S for scared. I'm worried about Peter getting hurt because his feelings for Hannah do seem really intense. If Peter and Hannah don't end up together, will he be crushed? Okay, and he leaves with a backpack heading to perhaps another windmill. Will there be a third time? Okay, so now I'm thinking, who's gonna be next? Who can top that? <laughs> oh, I know. Tyler. I miss you, girl. I miss you. <laughs> Tyler is looking a little T for tan and R for ripped, and I am V for very excited about it, okay? Yeah, mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm kind of shocked by what Tyler says. He says he's ready to propose to Hannah. Like, I don't really have any questions or words or doubts no more. I'm just ready to propose and get down on one knee and be her man. But we haven't even heard him tell Hannah he loves her yet. Do you guys think Tyler's ready to propose? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and we're having a massage moment with Tyler. And we've seen this in the previews, but like this whole episode, it was even better than we anticipated. Tyler actually participates in the massage. You what? You're just making me blush. It's okay, blush is good. And Hannah is so into Tyler, and we see why. The sexiness is jumping off the screen, isn't it? I'm watching this movie, whatever it is whether it's on HBO or an Oscar winner or on Cinemax or streaming or something new, an independent film, a documentary, I'm watching this movie. Okay. I'm 1,000% sure that physical intimacy with Tyler is not an issue. And I want to drink for every time that Hannah says a smart thing about sex this episode. Uh, she says that, honestly, her and Tyler have an attraction, but they need to work on their communication. I feel nervous and scared about just how far our physical connection can go 
when our emotional communication needs to catch up sometimes. And that if he's her forever, she has forever to be intimate with him. Then I have forever to be physical with him. That's for smart, smart girl. Mm -hmm. I, like, I don't want to go into fantasy suite and have sex. And then we drink for clarity. Hannah tells Tyler very clearly, I don't want to have sex in the fantasy suite. Um, when Hannah is telling Tyler that she's not ready for them to sleep together, he looks so scared. <laughs> don't drink for every S word. I'm not trying anymore. Now I'm trying not to, but it's difficult. A lot of S words. Like, see the wine? <laughs> um, he looked frightened, as if he was worried that maybe she would break up with him. We have to say a few more S words because Hannah says that Tyler wants her to be a strong woman. He makes me feel strong because he allows me to be the strong woman that I am and he celebrates my boundaries. Yes, S for strong and S for supportive because that is the man that Tyler C. B. Let's remember though that Hannah still hasn't told Tyler she's even falling for him. She also didn't tell Peter that. The solo person she's told that to is Jed. What do you guys think about Hannah's feelings for Tyler? I think her feelings for Peter are stronger. I'm worried with Tyler that it's mostly a friendship slash physical attraction. I'm S for scared. But then things get even better than we expected. We already knew Tyler was a supportive man of a strong woman. And in the morning after, Hannah says that Tyler is, quote, the most respectful man she has ever been with. He was the most respectful man that's ever been with me. Ever. Ever. I'm S for spent. I'm S for shutting down. I'm S for so obsessed. <laughs> There's a lot of S's in obsessed. Jesus. Oh, we're gonna get to Jesus. He's coming later. So, new drinking game. Drink for every backpack. Tyler leaves with a backpack also. Like, can we get these men like a tote bag or a roll away carry on or something? Like, these, these backpacks are weird. And like, watching him just leave me from our day, like, it rips me. Oh God, and Hannah says that things with Tyler have ripped her. And not just because he's ripped, you know? Like, it makes me like really emotional. Okay, now much like last week, this is going to be a very different second half of the episode from the first. Last time I saw Hannah, I honestly felt pretty angry. Oh, now it's time for Jed. Hello. I need some clarity on Luke. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right off the bat, Jed is crapping all over Luke again. And wow, who would have thought I would feel defensive of Luke? Yeah, that's the power of Jed, I guess. Got me over here feeling sorry for Luke, wanting to say stop talking crap about Luke. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> So Jed and Hannah are like out with a local family and there's music and I wrote down, please God, don't let Jed sing again. Luckily, this episode was better than expected. That didn't happen. <laughs> Hannah acknowledges that she has only told Jed she's falling for him. Whew. Um, and Jed is J for jealous as he says that Luke is an L for liar. I've seen him lie. Let me give you an I for I find it ironic that you're saying that, Jed. But Trust is like the number one thing. Hannah says that trust is the number one thing. Number one thing I think a relationship has to be built on. A relationship has to be built on. And she makes a toast to honesty. Being able to be honest. Let's go. I guess to the core, it kind of says a lot about your decisions. Luke comes up again, and I am, I am so tired of Hannah having to tell these guys that she is going to deal with the Luke thing herself. Then Jed takes a real turn and is now questioning her very ability 
to make decisions, period. Worry that you have a hard time letting go of things that aren't good for you in your life. Now, maybe you should turn that questioning around to yourself, Jed. I gotta look in a mirror, try to see myself a little clearer. It's written in the stars that I shouldn't have let my lie get this far. Hannah needs a drink. Yeah. Me too. I just want to get up for a second. And Hannah is up and she's gone. And there is crazy camera work of following her. I'm so, ugh. By the way, you know what Hannah didn't have an opportunity to bring up at this dinner with Jed? His other relationship. Because she didn't know about it. You just have to let me figure it out. Hannah says to Jed that her feelings for Jed have nothing to do with Luke. I understand how it's frustrating. And I wonder if Jed was using that same justification in his mind about his two relationships. Okay. It's the morning after and another backpack. I just... I... Two is an important number, isn't it? Things in the windmill. Twice. Jed's number of alleged girlfriends, too. And I was thinking more and more about why Jed brought up Luke twice on this date. And I kind of wonder if it was a bit of a distraction. My theory is that Jed was maybe going to try to tell Hannah about the girlfriend thing. And maybe he wanted to bring Luke up to really drive home that Luke's the bad guy here, not Jed. Like to make himself look better? What do you guys think? Why did Jed keep bringing up Luke? Now we gotta go to Luke. So when it comes to confidence going into this week, I'm so confident. I know that she knows I'm, I'm the one. All right, Luke gets to go to Santorini. And that just doesn't seem fair because I think when we think Greece, we think about Santorini, the blue domes and the gorgeous moments. And Luke gets that, really? Luke said he was honored to go to Santorini. I am honored. And I wrote down, yes, you freaking should be. And then the sex talk is happening. So let's talk about sex. Okay. Um, oh, God, we've been waiting for it all season long. You know, I, I want it the way I want it, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, don't drink for just when Luke is talking because he's just talking so much, and Hannah's doing such a good job listening. And Luke says that sex is an incredible thing. Yes, sex is an incredible thing. And Hannah's like, mm -hmm. And Luke says a lot of things. Only, you know, when it's in the, within the guidelines of marriage. Throughout which all of them, Hannah's like, mm-hmm. She's just doing so much good listening. I was so impressed with her composure, with her grace. Like if I, I mean, if I, if you told me you're having sex or you had sex with one or multiple of these guys, I'd be wanting to go home. We're drinking for clarity. Hannah is very clear. She says, quote, some of the things you said. Some of the things that you said. I don't agree with at all. Like, I don't agree with it at all. He says if she had sex with any of the other guys, then he would leave. 100%. Look, that on its own is Luke's opinion, and it's fine. Honestly, like, I'm like kind of mad. But Hannah then brings up a bunch of freaking incredible points. She was a GD superstar lawyer in this moment. She gave him exhibits A, B, and C. Your way out of here, Luke. And again, we stand a Hannah. Let's break it down. Hannah calls him out. Luke starts backtracking. So, I do want to take a step back. He makes really strong statements and then backtracks on them and doesn't own them. Luke, you can feel the way you want to feel, but you got to own and stand by your opinions, man. You just said them. Own your words. Okay? The closest thing that I've ever felt to love at first sight was probably with you. By the way, explaining some of her connection with Luke, Hannah says that things with Luke were nearly love at first sight. He did get the first impression, Rose, but we have broken that bachelorette curse by this point for sure. Yeah, I would be like, okay, I'm gonna talk to you, but you know what, like, I'm out of here. So what but if, that, if you uh, have, like... As usual with Luke, the conversation gets convoluted and confusing. 
But this is what is critically important. Hannah tells Luke, I have given you so many chances. I could have exed you off so many times from being my husband from things that I want out of a relationship. I have looked past many of your flaws for hope that we could evolve together. Like, well, I want somebody who can get along with people who doesn't have pride issues. But you just said out loud that you would cut me off if I didn't live up to your standards. And that it's just sex for you and that you're like, if you've had sex, then I'm going home. And that is when District Attorney Hannah Brown laid the law down. What did you guys think of Hannah's points? Let me know in the comments below. Luke can feel how he wants to feel about sex before marriage, but as far as I can tell, Hannah has never said that she's someone who has a problem with sex before marriage. If I did find out that one of these relationships, you did slip up and you had sex. So Luke's calling it a slip up, but Hannah's never said she considers it a slip up. Hannah, I just, I can't applaud you enough on this. It was important, it was a learning moment, it was masterful. And I've prayed so much for clarity, and I feel like I've finally gotten clarity on you. So now things are crystal freaking clear. As clear as the blue waters of Greece. As clear as that Greek vodka Viagra water drink that Hannah took a shot of. Hannah says, quote, I do not want you to be my husband. I do not want you to be my husband. And she sends Luke off, but he won't leave. And drink every time Hannah says, come on. Come on, it's over, come on. Luke, please, come on. I feel like you owe me at least. I don't owe you anything. You guys, I don't hate Luke. I don't hate Jed. I don't hate Peter. These people are people who are exposing their lives to the world in their first time on reality television. That's tough. And I want them to have the chance to speak for themselves when I'm able to interview them. But the biggest thing that bothers me about Luke is something that he did again on this episode. He does not respect Hannah's ability to think and make decisions. I don't even care what you just said to me about you feeling like that you have clarity on this. I still feel like you don't. So it's raining. You know, Luke, the rain has come a way to wash things and to give clarity. I can probably get you to go in that limo it, from what you said. And Anna has to make the windmill reveal to get Luke away from her. So, like, I have had sex. So what? Y yeah. And I, Jesus still loves me. This episode is even better than I thought it was going to be! From obviously how you feel, me in a windmill, probably, you probably want to leave. <sighs> I in a windmill. And guess what? We did it a second time. Like you guys, our girl Hannah didn't even tell him that by choice or to hurt him. She had to tell him that to get him to leave! <sighs> How frustrated were you at that moment for Hannah? I love you, Hannah. And then, oh my God, Luke asks Hannah if he can pray over her. Can I pray over you before I leave? No. C for condescending much? Oh. He finally leaves and Hannah grabs her wine. Mm -hmm. I answer to the Lord, I don't answer to Luke. And she finally figured it out for herself. I finally figured it out for myself. She said she would, and she did. You guys, our girl follows through. We stan a Hannah. S for stan. Don't still be playing that stupid drinking game. I can't believe it. <laughs> Next week on The Bachelorette. And then we get the trailer. And all the guys look so good. I will say, as much as I have questions about Jed, I do love these final three guys' friendship moments. Especially because we see that Luke, C, for comes back. 
We had seen in the trailer that some guy comes back with a ring to propose to Hannah, and I had guessed that it would be Luke. This isn't over for me yet. And yes, it turns out that it is Luke that he returns with an R for a ring, and the other guys have a problem with it, not shockingly. By the way, you guys, we're gonna get the men tell all. I can't wait for it. Cam's gonna be back. We've done a lot of letter work this episode, so good to see C for Cam again. Me, this is why you don't date two people at the same time. We see the trailer for the finale and Hannah says, this is why you don't date two people at the same time. Advice that would have been great for Jed. Okay. Everybody, this has been so much. And let's make a final cheers to two amazing moments because two, <laughs> a first and a second. That's the critical number for this episode. So I want to cheers to the windmill. And I want to cheers to our girl, Hannah. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here. As always, leave all your thoughts below. And this might be my favorite season of The Bachelorette ever. It's going to become even more wonderful now because of a different amazing man. No, it's not Tyler C. It is JC. JC, I need you to walk in here with the outfit that you're wearing. You guys, JC didn't even know what the guys were wearing at the end of this episode and how amazing they would look in their grays and their blues and their Greek moments. And look at what this boo boo showed up to work in today. Look at him. Are you kidding me? Proud to be JC. Look how handsome this man looks. You are Grecian. You are ready for Greece. Dapper, daring, and you know what? A damn good guy. I'm gonna, this is very expensive wine, but I'll give you some. What? Mm-hmm. And then you. Just a little bit. It's like $10. Wow. Love you guys. Let's say bye together. One, two, three. Bye! bye. Okay, great. great. I've been talking for 37 hours. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs>